exclusive with federal judge Esther Salas, who has served for more than two decades. Her only son, Daniel, was home visiting from college to celebrate his 20th birthday when tragedy struck. Daniel was killed at the front door of their New Jersey home by a man disguised as a delivery man. Her husband, Mark, was then shot three times. The judge was the intended target of the gunman, an angry attorney who was a self-proclaimed anti-feminist. Now the judge is opening up about that day in her first television interview and what she is doing to make sure her beloved son Daniel will be remembered. Danny was the love of our life from the moment he was born. We struggled to have a baby. I had four miscarriages, three before him, one after him. From the moment that little boy came to this world, he was the center of our universe. But their world turned upside down on July 19th. Federal judge Esther Salas and her husband, Mark Andrel, had just spent the weekend celebrating Daniel's 20th birthday with friends at their home in New Jersey, when everything changed in an instant. July 19th. Walk us through that day. Well, you know, my son has always wanted to spend critical holidays and birthdays with us. And so he wanted to marry those things, his friends and his parents. It was, uh, it was a great weekend. And at some point we ended up in the basement and um, Danny was downstairs talking to me, as he always did. He said, keep talking to me, Mom. I love talking to you. And it was at that exact second that the doorbell rang. And before I could tell him, let Dad handle it, he shot up the stairs. And the next thing I hear is, boom. And then I hear, no. And then I hear a series of bullets. And I just, what is happening? So I, I just, I don't, I remember running upstairs and, and it was so loud. I almost thought it was like mini bombs or something. And then I saw Danny lying perpendicular to the door holding his chest, and uh, I saw Mark on his hands and knees at the porch. He had crawled to the porch to try to get the license plate or something of, of the person. I just got on the floor and I just saw my son. I know at some point Mark was screaming, call 911, and I tried to do that. And I lifted his shirt and I saw the bullet hole. And Mark managed to crawl back, and we were both just watching him fade away. Daniel taking a fatal bullet from a man posing as a delivery driver, the gunman shooting Judge Solace's husband three times before fleeing the scene. Fortunately, Mark survived. I think the hardest injury right now is to his heart. They were so close. He, he talks about Danny as his best friend. The FBI identifying disgruntled lawyer Roy Den Hollander as the alleged shooter. He was found dead one day later with a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Do you recall any dealings with this man? Vaguely, vaguely. It had been months, if not a year, when he last appeared before me. And uh, Had he ever threatened you in any kind of way? Nothing. There was nothing. Um, you know, my husband and I sat for an FBI debriefing. I know that uh, he hated me because I was a woman. He hated me because I was Latina. And, um, and that was the source of hate. That was, you know, what I had done was I had the nerve to become a judge. Was there ever a time that you had feared for your safety? You know, you're always conscious of, of your surroundings, and we were. We were very uh, careful. What I think happened is our defenses were lowered with what was happening around us. I mean, I was ordering packages every day. You know, he, we play it back. What if I would have stopped him? The what ifs. But after that FBI debriefing, I ha there's peace. If he didn't do it that day, he was going to do it. When you posted that video, Judge Salas, just weeks after your son was killed, and you were demanding more protection for federal judges. Let me be clear and tell you firsthand, this is a matter 
of life and death. What can be done? We start with trying to eliminate the personally identified, uh, identifiable information, what they call the PII, um, getting that off the internet. There's the idea of increased home security systems. And the reason I did it was because I said, I have to protect and at least help to protect my brothers and sisters on the bench. And how do we do that? We do that by never letting anyone forget Daniel, never letting anyone forget what he did for us, never letting anyone forget the high price we all pay if indeed the right things aren't done. Judge Solace now relying on her faith to move forward, finding the strength to forgive her son's killer. And from the moment I did that, I felt lighter. You know, hate is heavy, love is light. What can you say to someone who's watching and going, it's wonderful that you're able to find this strength and this faith, but it's not within me. You need to, whatever your faith is, hold on to that. Whatever you need to do, get the help you need. And moving forward for you, being on the bench is a lifetime appointment. Yes. Are you planning on returning to the bench? Absolutely. Absolutely. This man took the most important thing in my life. I can't let him take anything else. I know that I'm going to strive every morning to be the best person that I can be. My son gave his life for his father and I. I have to look at that and say, what a gift. I can't squander it.